I'm here with Kendrick Sampson. You know, we're here in Houston, Texas, downtown Houston. Yeah. And it's always great to have one of our own in town. Yeah. Do you still claim us, Kendrick? What you mean, do I still claim you? Do you still claim Houston, Kendrick? There's no, there is, Houston claims me. Houston you know, claims I you. I can't not claim Houston. I'm from Houston. I'm, I'm born and raised. I can't be from nowhere else. Well, uh, before we get into our little political talk, uh, what, what have you been up to uh, in Hollywood these days? Um, I've just been, to be honest, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> I yeah. mean, I've been obviously shooting and, and working um, on different projects, and I got one coming out in, the, uh, in December, December 4th, called Ghosting. It's a Christmas story. Oh, nice. Um, on Freeform, and, um, and, you know, shot an independent film actually in Fort Worth not too long ago, but... Yeah, you know, been working, but also that's part of uh, the Hollywood thing. It's not really separate for me. Is is making sure that I'm organizing my peers, are doing my best uh, to to make sure that people are are in, involved in being the change that we want to see and um, being uh, and thank you very much and um, you know being a part of the liberation culture. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about that. Um, you are you're an actor but you've decided to do more mm -hmm. first of all why i mean you're doing just fine i'm doing okay i mean you know i i we could all feel we all feel like we could be doing better a good mentor of mine used to tell me that you don't wait until you're where you want to be to to do the things that you uh feel that you should do um you have to develop those habits early so i've been doing that for um a long time based on that advice and others uh, uh, integrating service into everything that everything that we do that's what our purpose is on this earth is to be our brothers and sisters keeper you know I actually um, I love that I mean yeah. a lot of us have failed to realize that that is that is the only that is a reason for society to be our brother's keeper mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. I mean, if people don't know their purpose on this earth, that's what it is. Hey. Um, I believe that you know we should leave this place better than we found it, leave every situation better than we found it, and we can do that in practice. Um, and I'm, I've been working on like abolishing this idea of like giving back uh -huh. uh, because that's what we're taught to do is like you know make extract and 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 uh, be, become successful. And in order to become successful, we have to extract and we have to cut off. Uh, people from our community, we have to, you know, make sac the, t the thing that that we're taught that we have to sacrifice is basically community, people, you know, um, and that it's isolating and that's that it's worth it. But uh, that takes us away from the model of liberation that we need to do, which is coalition building and building community and strong, building strong and making sure that we're coming up together, making sure that everybody's okay, making sure that we're our brothers and sisters keeper. Um, and that's what I believe that we're, we're here to do. Now, when you left Houston, did you have that concept already as a part of your inner making? Or was there a transition point that occurred that made you see that, in fact, you are your brother's keeper? Uh, no, I think... I think, um, and it, it, I've just realized it in several phases uh, uh -huh. throughout my life, but for the most part, yeah, I did believe that. I didn't know exactly what it meant, um, uh, or I didn't have the same understanding of it that I have now. So now I know it um, in the sense of community building, in the sense of liberating and making sure that we all are working together, that we're building from the ground up, not waiting for the top to be benevolent. Um, I love uh, that. I, you know, I, I, I love that. We're yeah. not waiting. No, we're not waiting for a handout. We're not waiting, you know, uh, because that's what people that are have been greedy enough to extract from our communities are aren't going to one day just be like, you know what, you're right. I've got too much wealth. Let me solve poverty. You know, it's not, that's not, it, the government that was built to oppress um, is not going to one day be like, you know what, you guys are right. Let me relinquish this power to the people that should have it. Um, we actually have to take that. We actually have to build together and, and um, take that responsibility on ourselves. Um, and so that's what I've been been working on doing. So tell me a little bit about what you're doing here in Houston today. 
with the, the, the uh, National Organization for Women. Yeah, the National Organization for Women invited me out, um, which I thought was really dope. Uh, they are um, they put together this Bill of Rights to protect women and children in um, in in detention centers. Uh, migrants, refugees, asylum seekers, uh, asylees uh, that um, have been detained uh, unjustly by our government, our, this, this administration, and are facing inhumane treatment, um, just terrible tragedies happening in these camps. And, and you know, we've already been, uh, Build Power is the organization that I have with Tia Osho, who's also speaking today. Um, it's a social justice initiative and we supported like the Close the Camps um, initiative and Black Alliance for Just Immigration, went down to Tapachula and saw like all the black migrants down there and we, we focus on the you intersections. You did? Yeah, that is like, you great. Yeah, a lot of uh, black migrants down there, like 3,500 yes. I think are being detained down there. Um, and and we've been to Tijuana and a bunch of places, uh, but highlighting the intersections that trans people are there and they're facing even worse treatment. Um, I think there I saw the statistic that they make less than a, a per, one percent of the population, but twelve percent of the sexual assault complaints. Uh, that um, so you know trans people are being sexual assaulted, they're dying, they're being denied HIV. Um, uh, treatment, uh, uh, LGBTQ a people are like higher at higher risk of not getting the health care that they need. Um, they're fleeing certain like persecution, certain death, and and such. And so are you know these women trying to get their kids out or or running away from sexual violence and then coming into the uh, detention centers and facing it anyway. Um, uh, so. That we're really fighting for this Bill of Rights to be adopted, which is just essentially a, a baseline of morality. You know, it's just—it is supposed to be what we have already stood for, right? Exactly. There should—we shouldn't have to be fighting for these things. This Bill of Rights shouldn't be necessary. Um, unfortunately, it is. Until we can uh, come to a solution of um, of humanity at the border and 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 realize that these borders were are arbitrary and, and are not made to to criminalize people and um, and hurt people and separate families and don't give us an excuse to do so um, you know we have to make sure that the the camps that they have are at least humane you know while we're trying to shut them down uh, it doesn't seem like that's happening anytime soon so at least accept mm -hmm. this bill of rights well Kendrick let me tell you we, we have a panel after this interview we'll talk about this further thank you so kindly for speaking with us absolutely thank you very much for having me